Welcome to Excel 2013 Pivot Table Tools. I'm Trenner Laurie. We'll look at both the tools of the Pivot Table Tools, Analyze and Design. We'll start with Analyze. You can see there's several groups, but the first one is Pivot Table Group, and the first tool in Pivot Table is the Pivot Table Name. If you have not named your Pivot Table tab yet, then it will show as Pivot Table 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. It'll be uh, numbered. And then under that, you see options. There's lots of options in there. Click the drop down, and you, it opens up a dialog box with multiple tabs. Let's look at the first one Layout and Format. The first option is to merge and center cells with labels. And when you choose that, that means that your labels can have uh, a merged. Uh, for example, let's say that I want to say um, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, but they're all 2014. Instead of having to say 2014 above each of those labels, I can put 2014 once over all four of them. I can merge and center them. So that, that could be useful with labels. Also look at the very bottom and your option is to auto fit column widths on update. That's useful too if you're going to be adding lots of new data. Remember you only add the data in the database and then you hit the refresh button in the pivot table and it automatically refreshes. However, if the column width is too small for the data, of course, your numbers turn into hash marks or pound signs. And uh, so if you check auto fit column widths on update, then it will automatically expand them. If you don't want to do that, make sure that you deselect that by clicking it. The next tab is Totals and Filters, and this is where you can choose to show grand totals for rows or columns, or independently. There's another way to do that, I'll show you that as well, but this is, if you're going to be in Pivot Table Options, you might as well change that in here. Also, if you use custom lists, and if you don't know how to do that, you need to watch one of our other training on how to use custom lists. And that allows you to sort using those custom lists. So you can create your own list. So for example, you have multiple uh, locations and you have them in the sort order based on size. Then uh, you can use that in your pivot table. You don't have to um, try to cr recreate that somehow. Now you see the grand totals on the right side and across the bottom. And now you don't. You can change it in Pivot Table Options or on a command right on the ribbon. I'll show you that in a minute. The next tab is Display, and this allows you to show the Expand or Collapse buttons, and we'll show you how to do those in uh, just a few minutes, and some other good tools in here. For example, Sort the Data Source Order or Sort A to Z. You can choose how to, how to sort in your field list. On this Pivot Table, we added three fields to the row labels. Just by doing that, the Collapse buttons appeared automatically. See the little minus sign? The Collapse buttons are the default because it will show you all the data automatically. If you only want to see the departments without first and last names, click the minus sign to collapse the data. You can see I clicked on several departments to collapse each one. Once it is collapsed, the button changes to Expand with a little plus sign. Click it again to show all the data under that heading. The Pivot Table Options Printing tab, one of our options is to repeat the row labels on each printed page, which is a really good idea because if you have multiple pages, you won't know what you're looking at. Let me show what I'm talking about. Here you can see that there's a lot of rows and order and total price is up at the top. But when I move, there's 16, uh, you can see here there's 16 pages, but when I move to the next page, I can't see the titles at the top. So this is what I mean by print titles. You definitely would want to show those. In the data tab, we can choose to save the source data with the file. If we don't do that, if we try to put it on a thumb drive or um, a USB drive, then you wouldn't be able to see the data. So make sure that you save the source data with the file, unless it's too big and you have that source data um, available to you every time you open that uh, pivot table. On the second half of the Analyze tab, we can see Refresh. I've been talking to you about Refresh. And every time you add data into your database, remember you cannot touch the pivot table with new data. You cannot delete data in the pivot table. You have to do all that in the database. And once you've made that change in the database, then you'll want to click the Refresh button. You have multiple options there. 
You can also choose to change the data source. For example, if you um, have different databases that uh, you draw from, maybe the data changes uh, daily, and so they change the name of the database daily. You can change the data source here. You can also choose to uh, clear uh, something that you don't want in the uh, database in the pivot table, and then you can select just I just want to see or make changes to the labels and the values, or just the values, or just the labels. So if you want to be able to select just a portion of your pivot table, you can do that here. Sometimes you want to move the pivot table to a, a new worksheet, and, and you can do that. Or you can overwrite an existing worksheet. Under Fields, Items, and Sets is Calculated Field. And in there, you can choose to create a new field based on a formula that you create from other fields. For example, here, the insurance level that is uh, offered is at the uh, annual salary times the performance rating. And that's the amount of uh, life insurance, for example, that we offer for the uh, person. On the show, you can choose to show or not show the field list. That's the field list on the right side. When you toggle it off, then it was, won't show. And because if you're not building it anymore, you really don't need to see it. You just want to see your totals in your pivot table itself. But if you need to get it back, you just click it again. It is a toggle switch. And also, the field headers. You can choose to show or not show the field headers. This is also the place to choose to show or not show the expand and collapse buttons. Now we're going to look at the pivot table design tab. And the first thing is grand totals. It's very similar to subtotals. We don't have subtotals here because um, we don't have uh, multiple levels. But uh, the grand totals, you can choose to show or not show. Now, we saw this earlier. Do you remember? Under the Analyze tab, under Pivot Table Options, in uh, one of those tabs, we could choose to uh, show or not show the grand totals. But this is nice because it's right on the Design tab. So you can choose to show them or not show them. Now with Report Layout, you can choose multiple versions. This is the compact form. This is the outline form. This is tabular. It looks a lot like a regular Excel spreadsheet. But it shows, for example, the types over and over again. And so if you don't want to repeat all the items in the labels, you have the option to do not repeat item labels, even though you're showing it in the tabular form. And now you can see the plus signs. And those plus signs are for expanding or uh, contracting the the display. The banded rows are very popular because if you're looking at rows and rows and rows of data, they all start to blend in. So when you turn that on, it makes each one a different color. So it's more obvious to see all the way across. You can do the same thing with columns. Under the Design tab, the Pivot Table Styles. And we can change the style as easily as you want. Now if you like a style that they don't have, you can create your own and give it a name and choose what you want in the table elements. So you can have it banded and you can have it a certain color. You can do all the formatting yourself. Just give it a name. That's all the time we have this time. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe to the Trainer Laurie channel.